patient hearing and I'm very Right. A very good afternoon to one and all. On the outset, I would like to thank the entire IDEC uh, organizing team, Shilpa Joshi, uh, Dr. Nita Deshpande, for having me here. Um, we have had a collection of nutrition subjects. One more added here. Uh, NASH, does that involve carbohydrate or fat restriction? Now, as... Let's hope this is not behaving temperamental. Uh, so we all know that NASH is basically uh, the advanced form of NAFL. And here you can see that uh, when healthy liver is accumulates fat and then uh, that gets inflamed, we have fatty liver goes into NASH and then of course there is fibrosis and further cirrhosis. Now, So basically, uh, what has been seen is that there is a bi-directional association in NAFL with metabolic syndrome. And in fact, this is reflected in the very recent recommended change in the nomenclature, where now we call it metabolic dysfunction-associated fatty liver disease, MAFL, instead of NAFL. And this is as recent as July 2022. And in fact, this recommendation highlights its metabolic and multifactorial nature. Now, since no drug as yet has been approved uh, for the treatment of NASH, dietary intervention, basically lifestyle modification, which involves dietary intervention and physical activity, are at the moment regarded as the cornerstone of treatment for NAFL and NASH. Uh, so the whole conversation today is whether we should be restricting carbohydrates or fat in the treatment of uh, NASH. Now it is very obvious that when one takes in extra calories, when one is consuming more than required calories, there will be liver fat accumulation. I mean, that is kind of common sense. But it is also clear that the macronutrient composition can also modulate that risk. And when uh, studies were done with hypocaloric diets. The conclusions that have been arrived at at the moment is that saturated fat is the primary nutrient which really increases the liver fat. Second comes the simple sugars. And at the moment, there is no differentiation between free sugars, whether it is glu glucose or fructose, they all behave the same. And lastly, it is unsaturated fat, which in fact will be protective, and here PUFA seems to be more protective than MUFA. Uh, now, since it was very difficult to you know, disentangle the effects of extra calories from the effect of different macronutrients, there have been a lot of isocaloric and hypocaloric dietary intervention studies that have been carried out to get some insight into the effects of different macronutrients. And when isocaloric diets were studied, even when the diets are isocaloric, the different types of fat and carbohydrates, they influence the liver fat accumulation in different ways. Once again, saturated fat and fructose induce the greatest increase in intrahepatic triglycerides, which is the liver fat. And of, of course, accompanied with insulin resistance, uh, while unsaturated fat seem to provide a protective role. Again, when hypocaloric diets were seen, calories, uh, low calorie diets, low calorie, low fat diets, somewhere around 1,200 calories, we, get, we got the best results where there was 81% reduction in the liver fat uh, composition. So low cal diets definitely uh, work. Now whether here does the macronutrient composition matter well, at the moment, it looks like that the negative energy balance in general seems to reduce the liver fat content. Specific macronutrient manipulation may have some utility, but at the moment, we are not sure. So if we summarize these three kinds of studies, 
Hypercaloric intake, when the caloric intake is high uh, in obese individuals, the increase in liver fat is independent of the diet composition. Okay, the extra saturated fat and the sugars both lead to increase in liver fat. If you're looking at hypocaloric intakes, low calorie diets, there is a reduction in liver fat and long-term studies have shown that it is independent of the diet composition. The calories just need to be low, there needs to be a negative calorie balance and you will see the reduction in liver fat. If the diets are isocaloric and they are compared, the magnitude of effect uh, depends on the diet composition. And here, the deleterious effect are seen most with saturated fat followed by the effect of sugars. So then, is it finally carbohydrate or fat who's the villain? Well, by the current evidence taken together, the data supports the use of diets that have a reduced content of saturated fat, free sugars, and refined carbs in the treatment of NAFL. So it's not one or the other, it's carbohydrates and fats that we need to reduce. In fact, a lot of scientific Association, the International Association guidelines also have highlighted the fact that we need to target weight reduction up to in the range of 7 to 10 percent uh, for uh, the tree in the treatment of NAFL. And those who are in practice, we know that that is what we generally target. We ask our patients to lose, uh, start with 5 to 10 percent weight loss. Um, some of the European associations have mentioned that Mediterranean type of diet is more beneficial in patients with NAFL. However, specific recommendations are divergent. For example, again, uh, the uh, European associations have recommended the exclusion of processed food and sugar-containing uh, solutions, but the American Association and ESPEN do not provide such recommendations at the moment. So, in conclusion, the most important thing is calorie restriction, regardless of dietary composition. While low carbohydrate diets have been more prom promising for reducing metabolic dysregulation and severity of NAFL, this in fact I think is most important in our Indian context, where we are basically a carb-loving nation, we just love our carbs, so we should be looking at replacing some of our carbs with protein, need to counsel our patients and especially look at the excessive intake of sweets, mitais now in this festive season, and the sugar uh, containing uh, beverages, which could range from aerated drinks to sherbets to what have you. And also, we need to tackle our fascination with the saturated fats, especially the ghee and the coconut. I mean, you know, we have enough patients who have started using ghee as the only cooking medium or uh, keep asking that should we take, be taking two teaspoons of ghee every day. So we need to dispel these myths and work on these because there seems to be enough evidence to prove that saturated fat is definitely a uh, devil when it comes to NAFL. Uh, going forward, interaction of diet and exercise with the gut microbiota, as Gita just mentioned, and precision, precision nutrition will lead um, to developing personalized lifestyle intervention strategies for people with NAFL. Thank you.